Welcome to the village of Broomfield. The busy road that you are seeing is known locally as Broomfield Road and it follows the course of the ancient Roman road through Chouncford, which was then Caesaro Magus or Caesar's place in the field. Broomfield is an ancient village which we can trace certainly back to the Doomsday Book where it was known as Brumfelder, which means open meadow where broom is grown, thus the modern name Broomfield. The church we're going to be looking at is St Mary with St Leonard and I believe that this church shows every indication of an ancient pre-Christian place of worship. The church was dedicated to St. Leonard approximately 1150 and rededicated to Mary around 1504. The church itself was built in the 11th century, the south wall which contains most of that 11th century origins was actually incorporated with Roman bricks from an old Roman settlement that once stood approximately a mile away. The tower was added in the 12th century and unlike most Norman churches it was built round instead of square because Essex has no natural stone it only has gravel, flint and chalk so the stones are not big enough to form a square tower. So in Essex you will find a handful of churches with a similar round tower for the same reason. Interestingly, outside the church are two sarsen stones. These would have been carried here sometime during the last ice age when the ice was melting and creating a stream, a flow of moving ice which carried rocks and large boulders with it. So certainly in ancient times, such large boulders in a place such as Essex where no large boulders occur naturally would have been revered and seen as a spiritual or at least a special object. That's why in a handful of Essex churches you will find them incorporated in the churchyard, around the churchyard or in the church itself. Some people believe that they are way markers. Other people believe that they actually were worshipped in pagan ceremonies as elemental gods were worshipped. Gods of the water, gods of the air, gods of trees and of course gods of rock, of stone, nature gods. There is a story associated with this church. The legend says that when they were building it, the original church was going to be built where the old Roman settlement stood. The legend says that every night they would start building, a dragon would move the parts down to the green where the church stands today. So that eventually the builders gave up and just built the church where the parts were moved to where this old Roman settlement once stood, once known as Dragon's Foot Field. There is a depression in the field, which is said to be the impression of a dragon's foot. All of the red brick, the terracotta colored brick, is of Roman origin, robbed from the old Roman settlement a mile away. You can see here what I'm pointing out. This is all the terracotta, the Roman brick. But what, what's interesting here is you can see the extension. This square section forms the original 11th century wall. The extension to the right is a 15th century addition. Also, another good indicator that this was an important location is maybe is that approximately a mile up the road is a 7th century burial of a Saxon prince. I will cover this in another video but suffice to say for now when excavated in the Victorian period items were found which indicated that the person that was buried here in the 7th century was a person of high importance. The burial mound has been compared to Sutton Hoe but we don't know, we can only make assumptions from the finds. Also very interesting, incorporated into the south wall, protruding from the wall in an odd fashion, a mass conglomerate 
also known as a pudding stone. They were called pudding stones because they look like plum puddings stuffed with fruit. What they actually are is stones that have been condensed under the ground under such pressure that they form one big stone from a mass of many little stones. Hence the name mass conglomerate. No one knows exactly what pudding stones were for. Much like sarsen stones, some people believe they might have been way markers. Some people believe that they were worshipped and actually seen as as godlike and revered but we do not really know exactly what they were used for what we do know is that where they are incorporated into church buildings it is a good indicator of an ancient church and that there was probably a pagan church on this site or possibly on the site of the roman building so mass conglomerates are stones in riverbeds covered in sediment under immense pressure. Then glaciers tore up the riverbeds, likely during the last ice age, and embedded in the ice flow, these large stones were moved in the glaciers to come to their resting places in Essex and thereabouts. Another very interesting legend associated with this church is that during a 15th century rebuild of the east wall, a devil's head was incorporated into the wall, the devil's head being from an earlier part of the church. The legend says that if you walk round the grave near that devil's head seven times in an anti-clockwise direction, that the devil will appear. I can guarantee you i can assure you with all confidence that whilst i don't like bursting anyone's bubble this is actually not a devil's head it is most certainly a green man if you look at the pictures of these other green men from churches which are more recognizable you can see the foliage from the mouth which is typical of a green man and you can see in this faded example at saint mary with saint leonard's church that same foliage coming out of the side of the mouth though it's very faint it is there this is not a devil's head this is a green man and just to prove my faith in my own understanding i am going to walk around this tombstone seven times and i have no fear that the devil will appear this is not me challenging God. This is me showing my faith in God and showing my faith in the understanding of old pagan religions. The green man is not an evil symbol. He is a symbol of nature. He is a nature spirit, a nature God. Borrowed from pagan times, this is just evidence of the Christianization of paganism, which was clearly still celebrated in medieval churches throughout England. This just proves to me the amalgamation of an earthy pagan spirituality which, although largely forgotten today, once permeated the whole of early Christianity. It is just evidence of the threads of paganism merging into Christianity, something which pagans and Christians alike both often wish to deny now let me put all this evidence together we have the roman road we have the local saxon prince to prove that this land was important before the norman invasion we have two sarsen stones which are only found in a handful of Essex churches. We have a pudding stone, which again is only found in a handful of Essex churches. And we have the Roman settlement that once stood up the field on the high ground. Ancient artifacts have been found, such as flint arrowheads, Celtic coins, and other artifacts, which prove that there was a pre-Roman occupation on this land. And also, not to mention that there are local springs nearby. My supposition is that either on the grounds of the church or more likely where the Roman building once stood, there was also a site of pagan worship. 
This would give a good reason to have sarsen stones to point people as a way marker on the Roman road that up this lane is something important. I do believe that sarsen stones were used as way markers, but not in the traditional sense of way markers, which tell distance. But I believe that sarsen stones were used as way markers to point in a direction of importance, which generally during pagan times would have been ceremonial sites for weary travellers. You know with a legend where you can summon the devil, you know that I've got to try that because I have every faith that this is not a devil's head, it's a green man. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video and expect a video soon of me summoning the devil. Ooh.